explain the virtual assistant to us and what you've announced this morning? Well, uh, I would call AI a real game changer now at this moment in time for Mercedes-Benz. So AI is used in uh, several instances, creating a car much faster, writing code. But AI these days is helping us really uh, to put the car in a different light. Uh, so the car is no longer an, a vehicle just takes you from A to B. It's somebody you can talk to. And that's give, exactly... Give me the basics of that. How does yeah. it work? How do I interact so, with it? It's about the human-machine interface, actually. And it used to be knobs and buttons in the, in the past, and it what was uh, voice signals, uh, phrases that you were using. Now, at the present time, we're using, actually, even ChatGPT in some instances in US cars. But that's more a one-way dialogue. But now with the virtual assistant, AI, and the in-house software, we're enabling a dialogue. So this uh, enables a fully intelligent car, an intelligent conversation, so the car appears in a completely different context. And that's what uh, users already experiencing participating in our ChatGPT beta program. So the use of voice control and voice interaction with the car is just rising dramatically by a more intelligent conversation with the car. And that's exactly what this virtual assistant that we are creating uh, with the help of AI and in-house software is enabling. So uh, this changes the relation between you, the customer, and the car dramatically. Marcus, who built the underlying technology? Mercedes, or you worked with uh, an AI developer like OpenAI? Well, the key is, uh, that's our understanding, we're developing our own uh, in-house software. We call it Mercedes-Benz Operating System. MBOS. That's called MBOS. So this is the foundation, this is the basis. This is a chip-to-cloud architecture. So we're defining the chip level, we're defining the base layer, middleware, we're defining also our cloud. So we own the cloud, the Mercedes-Benz Intelligent Cloud. So it's a complete 360-degree system. And within this system, we're having partners so we're using partners for AI modules, uh, data access. And so we're partnering here partially when it comes to the virtual assistant, but partially the software is written in-house in order to be in control of the result towards the customer and data privacy. Uh, just very quickly, if I'm a Mercedes customer, do I purchase virtual assistant or does it come as part of a broader software suite? Well, uh, the idea is that we provide a complete entertainment package. So it's not only the virtual across assistant. Across all model lines or? Across all model lines. So it's, it's ultimately about the customer experience. And the virtual assistant is just an enabler, an intelligent enabler that opened up the world of entertainment for a Mercedes-Benz customer. So you purchase a whole package of entertainment. It's video, it's audio. Uh, we just announced yesterday a partnership with Audible pod podcast. Uh, so there are many, many ways that entertainment in the Mercedes-Benz is taken to the next level through the virtual assistant. Marcus, you are entering a key battleground with Drive Pilot, level three, California and Nevada at first, and customers will be able to start taking delivery, download of this, early 2024. What has demand been like? Can you tell me how many Mercedes customers will be able to use Drive Pilot on roads in those states 2024? Well, we started offering a level three drive pilot in Germany last year. So we have yeah. quite some experience uh, in Germany and the interest uh, in purchasing the drive pilot with the S-Class and the EQS is really, really high in Germany. So now we're starting in the market here in Nevada and in California. Customers will receive the first cars um, and the interest is absolutely high. So, but this is a game changer. This is an absolute new a game technology. Game changer for revenue as well as technology? Will you make any well, money first, from it? Technologically, it's a game changer because responsibility moving from level two cars to level three cars changes from the driver to the vehicle. And that's a fundamental a paradigm shift that is happening here, supported by technology. So there's LiDAR technology in the car, cameras, radars, a, a software stack, an intelligent software stack, and extensive work with the authorities here in the US to get it uh, certified. So uh, it's a huge technology stack and package that we're offering the customers here with the benefit that you are enabled to perform side activities while you're driving. So eyes off the road and hands off the steering wheel for the first time. Right. This is the only vehicle in the market so far 
you raise a good point on certification. A big news story of the last week has been the recall in name only of all Tesla vehicles on autopilot in China. And the regulator said you need to do more to get the driver focused on the road, more alerts. Do you think you'll avoid a soft recall like that? Are you confident that once DrivePilot is rolled out here in the United States and later China, that it will just be able to, to exist in the marketplace? Yeah, I believe you can never rule out that you are running into a recall. But uh, on the other hand, we're doing everything, everything in the four fields uh, to avoid this and making sure this is a reliable system. Uh, so the intensive work, extensive work with authorities over a couple of years with DMV, NHTSA and many authorities in the country to explain the system to them and the boundaries of the system, what the system can do and what the right. system cannot do is so essential and to explain it in detail also to the customer. So it's an education process uh, that has happened over the last two years, three years in the country here, making sure customers and the uh, legislator understand the boundaries of the system here. And I think it's very important to distinguish between a level two system, a driver right. assistance system, and an automated drive pilot. The lowest so, level autonomy so, at three. And uh, it's so essential for the customers that they understand what the system is able to do and what they can do and what they cannot do in order to avoid what we call mode confusion. Right. So you should never confuse your customer what the system is able to do. That's why we clearly distinguished this is a level two car, driver systems, uh, takes a lot of load from you, but you always have to have your hand on the steering wheel and you are in charge. But in level three, you give the responsibility to the machine. And that's a fundamental change with the benefit you can perform side activities, watching movies and doing other things in the car legally.